Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna take a look at this spoked wheel. We're gonna create a tutorial using SolidWorks, and this comes from a YouTube comment from our friend Steve, who said, hey Toby, did you ever do a video solution for this one? Uh, well, I haven't yet, Steve, but here you go. Here is your video. And of course, if you enjoy this type of tutorial, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, be sure to go to twotalltoby.com and sign up for a free account. And of course, leave me a comment below. Ow. All right, so here is the drawing that we're gonna try to model up. I'm gonna click play on the video. This comes from the practice models playlist and I'll include a link down below in the description to this drawing. We can see here that this model is probably gonna be created with a revolve of some sort. And the reason we can tell that is because the cross section profile here has this taper to it. So I think that we'll create that using a center line, then we'll revolve that kind of about that center line to give us the outside rim of that spoked wheel. We're gonna be also creating this inside section, kind of like the hub of the wheel. And then we're gonna be focusing on this elliptical spoke. And this is 15 millimeters when it hits the wall here. So I think what I'll end up doing is I'll create a sweep profile here in the middle of the part, and then I'll create a guideline that kind of tapers down here to that 15 millimeter dimension. I'm having a hard time drawing that in this little plan here. But, you know, as always, whenever you're trying to create a 3D model from a 2D print, you want to start out with a basic game plan. So I think that's going to be my game plan. Create the rim, create the hub, create the spoke, do a circular pattern of the spoke, and then I'll finish up with a cut extrude of this uh, key weight hole here. So let me move that over to my second monitor. Let's jump into SolidWorks here, and this part is gonna be out of 1060 aluminum alloy. I'm gonna start out on the top plane with a center line. This way, when I go to create my, my profile of the rim, I can utilize what are called doubled dimensions to get to the center of that, uh, of that diameter. I'm gonna then take this geometry here and do what's called a mirror, mirror those entities across that center line. And then I'm gonna create my first dimension here, which goes from the outside of the rim all the way across that center line to give me that double dimension. That's gonna be 185. The uh, dimension here from the inside across that center line is gonna be a dimension of 150. And I've got a taper angle here on this shape, which is a taper of 20 degrees. Now the width of this shape here at that 20 degrees at the start of it is 15 millimeters, and that gives me a nice fully defined sketch. One little trick here when you're doing a revolve in SolidWorks is I've got two center lines now. I've got this center line and this center line. So to help SolidWorks not get confused, I'm gonna click on the center line here, then jump into the revolve command, and that way SolidWorks automatically adds that as my axis of revolution. So I'm gonna hit the green check mark there. I'm gonna to go to the front plane, begin a sketch, and I'm gonna create a sketch of a circle. Here I'm using my auto dimensioning and I'm creating a circle here at a diameter of 60 millimeters. And then I'm gonna extrude that out to a depth of 25 millimeters. And I'm just gonna right mouse button in the background and say mid plane to get that end condition of mid plane. Now I've got the outer rim, I've got the internal hub. Now I'm ready to go in and create the geometry for the spoke. And whenever we're creating geometry, which is gonna be swept, you wanna always start out with your path. So this path here is just gonna terminate, I'll say 82 millimeters. It just needs to terminate somewhere inside of the rim. So 82, millim uh, 82 millimeters, 85 millimeters, whatever you wanna choose there. Just create a line here that starts at the origin, comes across. That is our sweep path. And whenever you're creating a sweep, you wanna always create the path first. Now, the next thing that you wanna create if you're using guide curves is the guide curve. So I'm gonna begin a second sketch here on the front plane. I'm gonna create the sketch for the guide curve. I'm gonna make sure that this end point is vertical to the origin. I'm gonna make sure that this end point is vertical to the origin. And then I'm gonna define that with a taper here of 10 degrees over two. So five degrees for the taper. Now I need to create a point here, and I want that point to be coincident to the inner uh, edge of the rim, and I want that point to be coincident to this line. So I add those two coincident relationships, and now that point is gonna have a dimension here to this line with a value of 15 over two, since I'm only doing half of the spoke here, and the dimensions are called out at 10 degrees and 15 millimeters. So that's how you get that dimension to the elliptical spoke at the wall of the rim. So 7.5 there, there we go. And that is going to be our sweep guide curve. 
So you always want to start out with the path, then the guide or multiple guides, and then you want to finish up with the profile sketch. So I'm going to go to the right plane here, begin a sketch, and I'm going to create a sketch here of an ellipse. And then I'm going to use the pierce constraint for that ellipse. So I'm going to pick this point here, hold control, pick this line, not the end point, but the line itself, let go of control, and that's going to be pierced. I'm going to pick this point here on the quadrant of the ellipse, hold control, pick this line, not the end point of the line, but the line itself. So point in the 2D sketch, a line outside of the 2D sketch, let go of control, and that's going to be pierced as well. And now the final thing that I need to do with this sketch here is create the width of that ellipse. That width is going to be 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters throughout the duration of that elliptical sweep. And so now we can exit that sketch. We can jump into the sweep command. We can pick our profile, which is the ellipse. We can pick our path, which is the straight line. Then we can go over here to guide curves and we can pick this guide, which is the angled line. And since the center of the ellipse has to remain pierced for the entire duration of the guide. And since the, the quadrant of the ellipse has to remain pierced uh, for the entire duration of the guide. Sorry, I misspoke there. The center is gonna remain pierced for the entire duration of the path. The quadrant is gonna remain pierced for the entire duration of the guide. Well, because an ellipse is a symmetrical entity, that means that we're gonna get symmetry throughout the duration of that sweep. So we get the taper on the bottom automatically, as long as we pierce the center point and pierce the quadrant point. So we can kind of automatically get that additional taper on the bottom. We don't have to create a second guide curve on the bottom. So we can hit the green check mark. There we go. That creates our sweep with one guide curve, one path, one guide curve. And now we can take that sweep and we can go into our circular pattern command. We can say we want a circular pattern that about the hub. We want there to be six instances of that pattern. There we go. And now we can finish this off by creating that key weight hole in the center of this thing. I'm going to create a circle here uh, with a diameter of 25. I'm going to create a rectangle here. I'll give that rectangle a midpoint relationship to the origin. I'll pick this line, hold shift, pick the bottom of the circle and give that a dimension of 27. And then I'll pick this line up here and give that a width of 11 for the keyway. And so now we can do an extrude cut. And here in our contour selections, we can pick these contour regions here so that we get both the circle and the keyway. And that should pretty much do it. We can take a look at the sensor here. We can do a control Q to rebuild and we see that the sensor is coming up with a mass of 558.9 or 559 grams. So let's go to the video here. Let's pause the video at seven minutes, 14 seconds. Let's go to the very end of the video here. 559 grams is the correct answer. So now I could go down into the comments and leave a comment saying that I solved it in seven minutes and 14 seconds. So I hope that you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope that that helped you to understand how to use the uh, sweep command, sweep with a guide curve, and how to use the pierce command. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And of course, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next Too Tall Toby video.